Hi, a couple of videos ago, you can check it out, I was using the MPFB add-on in Blender to make little characters and that was really useful. However, I find it when I use sliders, it does chug a bit. And also the fact that Blend is in Blender, it's got a lot of other things going on. So the predecessor to that, which you can still download, is Make Human. So if we come to Make Human, you can see it's much more simpler. If, you, if you've used 3D a long time ago, it's kind of very rem reminiscent of Poser. I like Make Human because it's open source. I need to print some things sometimes and put them to my art. And if I was using Daz, there would be kind of legalities if I sold it. But as far as I know, Make Human allows me to print things. So what I'm gonna, what I'm doing for the weekend is to, I, I want to print a guide of a face because um, I'm gonna do some clay modeling. And I want to make, this as a kind of mask to make the face quite good. I could model it purely without doing that, but it's a very long process. And arguably, why do you need to do that when you can sort of have a guide? I'm not, I'm gonna put clay over the, over what's gonna be 3D printed out, but it's just to get the general face structure so it can be done quicker. So then I can do the real sort of fluid elements of the sculpt um, without having to really, really get slowed down by the, um, the, the face area but you know the, you know and you can see how easy it is in in make human to do this and if we're doing this in the max plugin it's just going to take a lot longer okay so it's a really good useful tool so i'm going to be playing around with that for an hour or so today and then what you need to do after that is if you want to get it in blender using just the old school method um, you you will choose a folder so i've got make human and human obj and then that will export there. So once it's exported, we can go to Blender and I've basically imported that here already. And what we you would do is you'd go to import OBJ and then you'd import it like that. And I'm in wireframe, so I'm gonna to come to solid view and you can see like this. So I just want the head. So what do I do after this? So basically I just put it in X-ray because I'm gonna to go to edit modes and I'm gonna, I can be in vertex mode and I'm gonna left click and select all of this and press X and that will delete the back faces. If it doesn't have X-ray on and we do that, if I delete that, it doesn't delete the back faces. It's kind of a thing in Blender that doesn't do that. So be aware of that. And just I just need to click the whole of this and press delete. See, I, I didn't have it on, you see, so I didn't, delete the back faces so not the it's not really the back faces it's the adjacent faces behind the uh, that model okay and then what I'd do is I'd clean this up and I'd you know just clean it up um, and probably I'd see these loops here going around here I'll just turn x-ray off you know I'd, I'd delete it on the loop so it's all neat but you can see already it's quite useful we've got this horrible stuff with the mouth going on that's a kind of an import issue but what we're going to do is i'm just going to use 3d print toolbox which you can set up in the add-ons you just go there and type in 3d print toolbox and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to check it's got a lot of problems and if i clean um well firstly it's not thick no thickness to it even with this tongue i'm just going to go to edit mode and press l Okay, it's not it's it's not unlinked, so I, I need to do something with this. So usually what I do is I, I'm just gonna put a solidify, this probably will work kind of okay. Just solidify the middle up a bit. Don't worry about these intersections really so much. Oh, okay, well I'll do it on the outside, that actually gets rid of that. Okay, it does, uh, does distort the face structure a bit, but as I said, this is just really a guide for sort of a general sort of feature face that I'm making not you know the be all and end all because I add clay on top of that and then um, if I apply that now that's a, a mesh with thickness okay there's a lot of weird stuff going on with the eyes but let's just see if we can make it manifold did it do it already it usually takes longer than that okay um, yeah it could be fine and now with that done I'm gonna press export to as an op I'm gonna do it the same op um, no I'm not 
Okay, I'll do it as the same object. Change my mind. Human, selected only, and now it's done like that. So I'm just going to type in Q for Cura, Cura. And it's going to load up Cura. So I'd spend more time with this. I'd probably delete this tongue. It looks pretty horrible, doesn't it? But the whole point of it is this is the mask and you know, it's gonna, once it's 3D printed out, it will have clay all around it and also the clay will go over the mask and to enable it to give it more of a sort of, you know, something that I want it to look like, but this is just a guide, to be honest. You know, it's just a general guide. Just waiting for Cura to load. Sorry, it's taking a while. So if you have any questions, just let me know, but I just thought I'd show you a process of how I do things tradigitally, in other words, you know, how I mix the real world with the non-real world, the digital world. Because I, I use sculpting traditional tools and 3D as a great way to combine it. And in the time of AI, when AI is good, but, you know, I like things in the real world and sort of the harking back to, you know, traditional actual reality. So here's human. I don't know about you, but if you spend a lot of time on the computer or VR or something, you kind of get it bit of a headache and you want to sort of go out and experience real life. I don't know, let me know if that's something you agree with or not. So now I've got the head and I just need to just select that blue cube there with the axis because it will do it uniformly if we just hover over that left click hold down. Okay. And the head I'm doing, I'm not doing a life size head so it's not going to be too big but Let's just do a quick slice and see if this will give any semblance of a 3D print. Sometimes you get errors, it, it still prints. And if you're doing something rough or a guide, it doesn't really matter. Just get it get it printed and then start, keep working, you know. Let's preview this, 48 minutes. Okay, and then you know, I drag this down and you can see it actually works quite well. And you can see all the bluey turquoise stuff is the supports. And then that's the face. And if I zoom in, okay, there's those gray bits, but it, it's giving me enough definition for me to have a face that I can work on. And in this case, the size is one about 10 by 10, yeah, um, 19 millimeters, 19 millimeters. Wow, that's quite small, isn't it? Oh, well, but you know, if I crank it up, it's going to take longer, which I will. My face is going to be about four well, it'll be, oh, that's 34. Okay, yeah. My face is going to be about 34 high. Anyway, thanks very much. If you've got any questions, let me know. Subscribe and keep working, being creative. Speak soon.